50 years ago, scientists proved that human activity is gradually destroying nature and that natural resources are being depleted faster than they can recover. This makes life harder and business making more risky. It is well known that the main drivers of the decline of nature are climate change, land use change, overexploitation of natural resources, pollution of land, air and water, and the introduction of invasive species. It is becoming increasingly obvious that every economic agent will have to take action to minimize harmful effects on nature and actively contribute to its recovery. There are two types of climate and environmental risk, physical risks and transition risks. Physical risks arise when hazards related to climate change or environmental degradation affect health and cause damage to human and natural ecosystems. They include acute risks and chronic risks. Transition risks can arise from the process of adjustment towards a low-carbon and nature-neutral economy, and they include the implementation of government policies, a shift in consumer preferences or changes in technology. All these risks could erode the value of collateral and reduce the likelihood of orderly loan repayment, which is why they should appear on banks' risk radars. We have taken a closer look into the structure of the bank's asset portfolio to see how vulnerable it is to physical and transition risks. In Croatia, there are five economic sectors particularly vulnerable to physical risks – tourism, agriculture, forestry, fishery and the distribution of energy. More than a quarter of banks' exposure to non-financial institutions is connected to these sectors. A major part of this financing is related to the financing of tourism. We analyze the data to determine the proportion of banks' portfolios that might be affected by adjusting policies towards a low-carbon and environment-neutral economy, such as loans related to housing, energy-intensive sectors, utilities sector, extraction of fossil fuels, and transportation. Out of the total bank's exposure to non-financial institutions, almost 40% is connected to these so-called climate policy-relevant sectors. Climate and environmental policies will also affect households, so loans to households can also be considered to be exposed to the risk of climate transition. There are good reasons why banks should be concerned about climate and environment-related risks, and the Croatian National Bank carried out a survey among 20 Croatian banks to discover whether they share that view. We wanted to find out more about how banks understand climate change and the degradation of nature and how these impact banks, how banks assess their exposure to those risks, the supply of green products aimed at reducing their environmental footprint, and the role of banks and the Croatian National Bank in fostering climate transition. Banks are predominantly confident about their understanding of challenges stemming from climate change and environmental degradation. Twelve banks think they are sufficiently or well acquainted with these issues. However, banks still do not take it as an immediate or serious threat to their business. Only one bank thinks that climate change and environmental degradation will have a significant impact on creation banks in general, while 11 banks expect this impact will only be moderate. Half of the banks think that their own activity will only be moderately affected and the other half do not consider themselves exposed to that kind of risk at all. Only two banks have made climate strategy a part of their overall business strategy, with their main reasons being concern about the risks, anticipation of regulatory framework change and wanting to take advantage of the arising opportunities. Those that haven't are hesitant 
15 banks are waiting for the regulators to make the first move. 11 do not attach much significance to the climate and environmental risk exposure of their portfolio. 10 of them think that those risks will not materialize soon and in comparison their planning horizons are relatively short, while some banks admit they do not have the capacity to deal with the issue. Although the majority of banks are aware of climate and environmental risks, when it comes to identifying, assessing and managing those risks, they are in the initial phase. Only two banks have included climate and environmental risks in their risk managing strategies, and five banks have authorized specific organizational units with monitoring and managing those risks. None of the banks have so far quantitatively assessed their exposure towards climate and environmental risks. Banks claim not to have adequate data, sufficient familiarity with the methodology, or adequate staff expertise. We also asked them which sectors they considered most at risk of climate transition. Banks have attributed highest climate transition risk to clients belonging to transportation, agriculture, manufacture of motor vehicles, the production of energy and the extraction of crude petroleum, and the construction sector. Nevertheless, banks have not yet started monitoring their exposures towards these clients. Most banks recognize some opportunities brought about by transition to low-carbon and nature-neutral economy. Three-quarters of the banks believe that they might benefit from this transition through offering financing necessary for investing or through rising demand for financing low-carbon businesses. Although only nine banks offer some sort of green products to their clients, those banks constitute a 90% share in total banks' assets. Their green products include loans for energy-efficient construction and refurbishment, loans for electric vehicle purchases, and loans for renewable energy production. 18 banks still haven't assessed their carbon footprint and have not yet set their environmental targets. 14 banks do, however, claim to have taken steps to reduce their environmental footprint. When asked how they see their role in climate transition, banks were almost unanimous, with 18 banks saying that they could gradually reduce their exposure towards carbon-intensive clients, offer favorable green loans and advise their clients accordingly. Four banks believe they could make their businesses more sustainable by reducing their own environmental footprint. Banks expect the central bank to guide and support them in sustainable financing by formulating clear guidelines and expectations, informing and educating banks, sharing the results of relevant analyses and methodologies, taking part in initiatives for greening financial systems, and leading by example by greening its public procurement and reducing its own carbon footprint. We have found that banks are aware of the risks but underestimate their own exposure to them. They overestimate the opportunities arising from transition towards a low-carbon and nature-neutral economy. And finally, banks need and expect guidance and support from the regulator in adapting their businesses to climate transition. Ultimately, the future will either be green or not at all.